Hello and welcome to Gabriel's 3D Printing. Today we'll be looking at a phone stand uploaded and designed by me. First things first, we're going to go down to developer notes, see if they have any specifications. And I did include quite a few. I said rafts doesn't matter, which is optional. Supports, yes. Resolution of 0 0.28 millimeters and infill will be uh, set to default, which is generally 20%. And print as orientated. So uh, that's that. I also included some of the important dimensions for you. So if you care about how tall this phone stand sits or at what angle it's uh, angled at, then take a look here and you'll find that information there. So once you're ready, click on the download all files up here and you should get two different STLs, which is the phone stand and the phone stand thicker. Now, the reason I included two is that, well, for, to start off, phone stand STL, which is a regular one, it's this thin one you see here, and basically that should be able to support one pound of weight, or 0 0.45 kilograms. So, up to a small tablet, which is pretty good, especially for the small size. Uh, the model is also topology optimized and tested, so you can ensure that it is going to hold your model without it falling or breaking. Now I made a different version considering I saw that one of my siblings was using this phone stand or was trying to use it in a vertical fashion. And considering there's a large gap here, then uh, it might be a little harder for smaller phones. So I made a thicker version, which basically allows you to put your phone more, uh, more vertical or place it vertically as well as if you have something heavier, like maybe a two pound tablet or something, then you can also use it there. In this case, it is phone friendly, uh, very big phone friendly, so if you have a case on it, you shouldn't worry, because I made the hole, or the little gap where it sits on 15 millimeters, which would be more than sufficient. So once again, uh, you're given both of the STLs, and you're also given part files, so you don't have to mess with these if you don't want to, but I included those just in case you want to engrave your phone stand, and we're not going to talk about how to do it, because that's something completely different. That's actual CAD modeling and editing. So, uh, but if you want, you can always engrave your your uh, little phone stand like I did here. I put Gab. Concerning my name's Gabriel, so uh, you know, choose whatever you want. If you had, to, if I only had to print one, then I would probably just go for the thicker one, just because you know you're you can actually put your phone on there uh, vertically, and you know you can do uh, heavier devices. So, whichever you choose. Click and hold on the STL and drag it to your preferred slicer of choice and give it a few seconds to load in. Once the model has finished loading in, you should see the phone stand and disorientation. So taking this step by step, we're first going to select a layer height. So up here where it says profile, click on this tab and select the 0.28 millimeter layer height. If anything like this pops up, click on the discard button and that's basically going to erase all previous uh, profile modifications. For infill, we're not going to change, but if you do want to have the exact same infill as me, change the infill density to 20%, and that's basically how much material is inside of the model. Next, we're going to go down to the support tab, click on that. You see there's quite a bit of red here. That's because the default angle is 45 degrees on, uh, on uh, Cura. Actually, it might be a little bit lower, 35 degrees for the low quality, but we can safely up this angle over to 60 degrees. Now, for most lower-end printers, 60 degrees is a questionable angle, but for this model, whenever I printed it, everything came out perfectly and flawless, so there was no uh, signs of overhangs uh, post-processing. Like, everything here was basically buttery smooth. So, no matter what you have, try 60 degrees. If you know for a fact your printer cannot handle the 60 degree overhang angle, you can always lower it down to 50 or 55. So whenever it's printing, take a look whenever it's about this layer height and take a look at this uh, section of the model where the A is. And if it's not turning out good, just cancel it and reprint with a lower support overhang angle. But 60 degrees should be more than fine. And that's basically going to allow us to only have supports in this L bracket shape right here. Next, we're going to go to support density and we're going to change that down to 5% basically how dense the supports are. Now, if you don't have that setting, you're gonna hover your mouse over the support tab, click on this gear, and type in support density, and make sure that's checked. And you should be able to see all the, uh, the support density setting here. 
Support Z distance should be the same as your layer height. So make sure that is 0 0.28. And we're done with the support tab. Next, we're going to go to build plate adhesion. Now, you really don't need any build plate adhesion for the thick one. But if you are printing the thin one, then maybe you should add a brim. And uh, if you're a beginner and this is one of your first prints, definitely add a brim because if your bed is not perfectly leveled and if you don't have all the adhesion uh, settings dialed in, then this print may move around when printing or all your prints will move around when printing. So uh, brim is recommended if you're a beginner. What that's basically going to do, it's going to add an extra layer of plastic around the model just to increase the contact area within the bed and the actual model. Make sure that it does stick in place. And there's nothing else we have to do, so last step is to hit the slice button and give it a few seconds to slice up. Once it's finished slicing, you should be given a time estimate of roughly 4 hours and 36 minutes, but that will depend on the printer you are using as well as the settings you selected. Now, we're also given an estimated filament usage of 43 grams, so keep that in mind. Now, we always preview the print, so click on the preview button. Take a look around the model, and we see that everything looks pretty good. This blue thing is a support, so we're going to have to remove these post-processing. But uh, other than that, everything looks good, so save the file and send it over to your printer. Here is the thin model straight off the build plate. For processing, it's going to be identical to the thick version, so all you have to do is remove the supports that you see on the actual phone holder. You can do that with your hands, but it's 10 times easier if you grab a plier and remove those. Supports should come off fairly easily if you use my settings, and the only other thing you should do is remove the brim if you did print it with a brim. Here are both the models, the thick and thin version, once processing has been completed. You'll notice that both of them say GAB at the very front, but yours won't, so don't be worried. Unless you do choose to engrave yours, I did upload the SolidWorks files in case you want to add some custom message or engraving on your model. As you can see, it may be a little difficult for the phone to stand vertically on the thin one, but on the thick one it's pretty easy. In the end, it's definitely a quick and easy print, very fun to design. I do recommend it if you want a phone holder.